Hey, we should open this now. Jen, you got to open my baby. We'll, we'll, we'll open it. We'll let her go live. But how am I? It's live now. to launch JCB Live. Come and join us. We are building the most inspiring and phenomenal communities of wine lovers. You are the wine expert. We just love wine. Cheers. Yes. Merci beaucoup. So Philippe, what is your passion? As we all know, wine is the catalyst of the greatest discussion. We'll be talking wine, but of course food, and naturally history, fashion, art, beauty, fragrance, everything that touches all our nation and senses. But do you see how beautiful that's gonna be? So let's have a toast. Cheers. Can we add a little Raymond wine in it? Oh, yes. Just a little bit. Wow, look at how gorgeous this is. Cognac in the kitchen. You know, this is like a canvas, it's a form of art. We cannot wait to see you there and to inspire all of us and to be inspired by every one of our guests. See you soon. Cheers. Bonsoir. Bonjour. Bonne nuit. How are you, dear friends? This is JCB Live. I'm so excited to welcome you on this new happy hour. I'm going to really need to make the sound to get things started because we have one of our most irresistible friends, Marnie Old, who's going to be with me today to have such a great time and tell you all about how we blend the French way. But let me tell you about Marnie. First of all, cheers to all of you coming to this amazing time together. Happy hour. Marnie is an incredible writer, a sommelier, a journalist, running restaurants to so many great things, but she runs as well the Vin Lightland for all the ambassador program we have. So I want to say hello to all our ambassadors, all our friends, all our Wine Society members, and everyone who loves what we do, and in turn, who enjoys the fruit of our passion, which is wine. So I would love, dear friends, to bring Marnie on and welcome her for the official fantastic toast with JCB69. Hello, Marnie. Oh, well, I have 21, but we'll have to toast across the country regardless. <laughs> well, it's a matter of color, you know. You have the Chardonnay Pinot, and I have the Pinot made the rose their way. Look at this. Ooh. Exactly. Ooh. So, okay. Marty, are you recognizing the jacket I'm wearing for you? I am. I am. We did quite a photo shoot for the cover of our book, which was Passion for Wine, that Indeed. took place in that very jacket. You see, there you are right there. Well, I looked a lot better then, but, um, <laughs> you know, it really helps to help Photoshop, of course. So, Marty, you are in fabulous Canada. Before we start... I am. Before we start, of course, talking about wine, you're an amazing wine lover. You were Franco-American, Canadian-born, multiple languages, started on the East Coast of America. What drove you to wine? Because I know you love beer, you love wine, you love food. What got you going? 
well, it was food that brought me to wine. And it was because when I was young, trying to decide what I was going to do in college, I was making my way in the world in the way many students do, which is working in restaurants. And I discovered very quickly that I had a skill set that was very well suited to restaurants. And I also loved the the, the chaotic change of meeting new people every day. I found it absolutely fascinating. And very quickly though, I discovered even as uh, before I had turned 21 and was legal to enjoy the wine, I discovered, <laughs> I discovered that the characteristics that, you know, I, from my background, my father was a geography professor. I was sent to school in French. I was a dancer growing up and all of these things combined to make me pretty darn good on the floor in the restaurant. But food, the quality of the food is really what moved me into fine dining restaurants very young. By the time I was 19, I was working in one of the top three restaurants in the city where I lived, which was Philadelphia, working actually with the younger, youngest maître chef de France, who at the time had an amazing restaurant combining, his, he was French, grew up in Paris, but his mother was Chinese. And so he had this incredible cuisine style that just taught me to accept no compromises on the quality of the product I was selling. So and as soon know. as I came into the world, I loved both the foods and the wines. Well, on that note, explain all our friends with us tonight. And we have many from Jerry Schneider, Michelle Williams, Laurie Turner is with us. Renai Kinsey, John Daniels, Peggy Dean, Lisa Long. The list is very, very long. There's a <laughs> lot of us tonight with us as our great friends. Explain how we get, or we can get in wine through the food perspective, because it's very important that people could be intimidated with wine. You're the prime example. You know a lot about food. You know a lot about theater, a lot about dancing, and you learned about wine and you became the experts you know today? Well, part of that is I, I think that food is such a natural, uh, the sustenance that we take from food, it is much easier for us to embrace and discover the quality of great food. Wine takes a little bit more discovery because as you know, being uh, uh, from the Burgundy region, a uh, place where the wines are not designed to taste their best on first sip, but rather to shine with food. It can be yeah. like the light of the wine is hidden under the bushel. So it takes until someone has one of those dining experiences. And working in fine dining restaurants, one of the things I loved most was that I could count on the fact that four or five or even 10 times a night, I would have someone in front of me who had never had that amazing synergy happen when you take a sip of the wine and then a bite of the food and then another sip of the wine and the two together are somehow more yeah. magical together yeah. than either of them was apart. A wine that wasn't perhaps your favorite by itself blooms with the food. The food that was perhaps a touch too salty is suddenly tasting fabulous with the wine. And that it almost lifts people off their chair. It's a transcendent moment. And I certainly experienced that in fine restaurants and I wanted to share that with the world. So I ended up pursuing that as my career. And I love it. So before we dive into the wine, Marnie, you make wine so easy and food so easy. We have many friends with so many great questions of how do we make wine easier for people to feel casual about it, to taste, enjoy, think about the pairing, and then evolve into new wines and keep discovering and becoming wine lovers. What's your advice to all of us? Well, this, this may not be the right thing to say to a Frenchman, Jean-Charles, but I think we need to remember to speak English when we're talking about wine, or at least when we're speaking to Americans. <laughs> The, my life. Is that the, the wine world has adopted its own trade jargon, its own lingo. And that's true whether you're in the world of wine, whether you're in the world of cars, whether you're in fashion, whether you're a scientist. We, we pick up terminology and use it in a way that we understand in the business, but that doesn't necessarily make sense to the entry level customer who's just encountering Are these you products. To say that I, I should say that this wine is flamboyant vibrant and <laughs> that's number six yes, i do love your mastery of the english language and your creative I use I of it promise. am i graduating to, I'm you and i get along so well in any so case keep going i'm so glad you you advising that <laughs> 
terminology that our audience understands. And so that is the number one rule I set for myself as a sommelier in fine dining restaurants. And I think it's one of the reasons that I ended up moving into the wine education department of the business is because my mother had been a kindergarten teacher. I, I think I inherited the explaining gene. So whenever I speak about wine, I try and remember not to use those terms that we learn in the wine business that can be so opaque to a wine drinker. And I love it in our book together. I think my daughters, Marnie, know all the images by heart. And they even <laughs> say, Marnie makes so much sense. Now I understand wine better than ever before. And I think it's so important to be very visual as well and to make sure that you know people have a, just a natural interpretation of how it looks like and how it feels like and how is it in the garden and how it is in the soil so what is your best advice before you we dive into frenchie uh, for everyone to analyze wine on their own well, the first thing is just to start separating your sensory experience by the sense that's perceiving it. So that means thinking about smells in the category of smells and tastes in the category of tastes and tactile experiences in the realm of touch. And of course, what we see, the visual stimulation of wine as well. Believe it or not, there's also a connection, as, as you remember from your second book, the one you did without me, called The Alchemy of the Senses. There's also How could a, I even do a connection to going to sound. Because the sound that we hear when we hear the resonance of a musical note or two great crystal glasses like those ones resonating together, it has such a strong analogy. It's a marvelous way to explain the magical resonance that fine wines have on the palate. When you take a sip of well-made wine, it just kind of vibrates on the palate. And the longer that vibration lasts in the most pleasant way, that is the best possible way to evaluate quality, craftsmanship, storage temperatures, and so on. And no one needs to take a university course to learn about that. They can just use the second hand on their watch to measure the length, what we call the finish of the wine and that learning to master your own senses to be able to make your own decisions about what you love what you like um, whether or not you agree with the critics is not important trust your own judgment and learn to master your own sensory experience and you know i'm attaching my jacket to look more formal now you see because i'm so excited about what you say you make me want to drink more wine and you make me feel very confident about it and that's the key you know, I'm so excited on August 27th, we're doing the first ever one hour tasting live with friends, all about the understanding of wine visually, the breathing, the inhaling, the feeling and all the chakras. So I hope everybody tonight joins us on August 27th. This is gonna be a big deal. This is gonna be the first time ever. And you know what I love to say to everyone? Wine and the glass, as this is your friend. Have a conversation, have a discussion. Let him or her talk to you, resonates with you, as you said beautifully, vibrate. Taste and talk to one another with your mouth, with your nose, with your eyes, with the sound, specifically when it's bubbles, and let the wine really communicate with you what he or she wants. And I think that's the key. And that's what I love. And that's why Marnie and I wrote this amazing book together, Passion for Wine. She makes it so easy. And dear friends, I need to confess. It's time of confession. You know, sometimes you've got to be true and honest to your own self. And I was thinking, Marnie, about this this weekend. I had to do a video of 45 seconds on organic and biodynamic and on Chardonnay. And I thought about you. I went into the book and I look at your graphics and it gave me all the clues in a short second to be able to really make it succinct, clear, and disciplined to the point, which is very hard for me. You know, I could go on and on and on and on. The typical French, you know, we talk too much. So, Marnie. That's Tonight, what we, we love about you, Jean-Charles. 
<laughs> and thank you, Marnie, for wearing Gina's kiss. This is the new beautiful necklace. Wow. This is insanely gorgeous. This is all the beautiful Swarovski of all the rainbow colors. And you're wearing your usual powerful red. I love it. But Marnie, I'd love for us to talk a little bit about what makes the art of blending so great. So I'm going to let you talk about the art of blending. And then I'm going to talk about this label that for me is so meaningful to the two worlds of France and America. So maybe briefly, Marty, just why do we blend and why do we blend grape varieties? Well, winemakers choose to blend different grape varieties for the same reason that a chef might use more than one spices in crafting a sauce or an amazing recipe. And that is that each one of those herbs or spices or ingredients in a dish bring something different to the table. Now, mm -hmm. it's absolutely true that there are some grape varieties that we tend never to blend because they never are improved by blending. They, they taste best on their own. The, the prime example of this would be, of course, Pinot Noir from Burgundy, which does not benefit from the intrusion of any other grapes. It's absolutely perfect on its own. However, a great example of a grape that does benefit from blending would be another famous French red grape, Cabernet Sauvignon, which often can be a little too lean, a little too aggressive, a little almost harsh on its own. But when blended with small amounts of other grape varieties, those can enhance its richness and add flesh to its bones, giving it a fruitier and much more pleasurable experience in the mouth. And so ultimately, the idea of blending is one that perhaps historically originally arose out of necessity. It, it, in the region of Bordeaux, famous for blending, or in the Rhone, famous for their blends as well, they tended to plant a few grapes that would thrive by flowering earlier in the spring and being ready to harvest earlier, and a few that would flower later in the season and ripen later in the season. And the idea would be, if the bad weather came in the spring, perhaps one of those crops would fail, but you would still have the other. If the bad weather came in the fall, the reverse. And so originally it was done as a matter of necessity, but today we continue this French tradition yes. because we like the results. We have desirable characteristics that are imparted to the wine by blending different grape varieties. This is like when Marty and I are together in the room, this is an explosion. The combination <laughs> of personalities. And dear friends, this is the exciting part of creating a menu, creating a sauce, and as Marty so well explained, necessity to today, sense of perfection. You know, when I was in India and we created Jainoon, and I salute my very good friend, Kapil, who I talked to over the weekend, all about chakras, about the Gita, as I'm preparing for this tasting very thoroughly, he said, I cannot believe we blended Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc together. Herbaceousness and richness and, you know, power. And I think, dear friends, the beauty of the wine we're trying now, which I love, I haven't tried it since we made it, which was probably four months ago now, time to go to bottling and labeling it, takes a while. I'm so excited about it because it has all what you want for this summer. A screw cap and of course a blend of great grapes that you will speak about Marnie in a yes. second but I want to show our friends this label that I'm a big fan of. So as Dylan is using his lovely long finger, by the way ladies he's still a bachelor, he's not into men yet but you know if you apply, you may say yes, you never know. He's very open-minded these days. It's been a long COVID, according to him. You can see we get closer. It's two Frenchies reaching. You see my fingers are full of pain because we've done a lot of painting yesterday with the ladies. And it was fun because one of my ladies, Honoré Josephine, did actually a French bulldog as a sculpture. I'm going to bring it Ooh. for a live session because this is phenomenally done. We wanted the French and the American flag together. We wanted the Statue of Liberty, you know, obviously uh, a great representation of the French loving America. And of course, those two French on each side loving wine. And I think this is the marriage of those two grapes and the love of my French bulldog, because many of you coming in 
who don't know why we have Frenchies, this was the gift to my lovely wife in 2007, a French bulldog, the best of the best of all Frenchmen that she could have better than me on four legs, <laughs> following her everywhere and not talking as much as I do. Just doing whoop, whoop, ooh, uh, 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 uh. Now it's all you, Marnie, because I'm gonna become a tiger. I can tell with that little animal that's coming through. Yeah, I have to now, I the cover of our book. This has been the best I cover we've ever done together. So, Marty, tell yes. us about those two grapes and why they work so well together. I will. I will. And if you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen because I think it's a, a better way to show the beautiful artwork and the paintings. Are you going to bring someone else into the party? No. I'm going to be jealous. No. Don't do that to me. No, this is just, this is, we are going to share a little, a few just images talking about blending the Frenchy way. Now, these are two amazing new wines in the Frenchy line that we are so excited about, which are, of course, inspired by your adorable French Hi, bulldog, baby. French. Oh, I know, he's so cute. Here he is relaxing on the couch at the can JCB I tell you lounge. Marnie? Marnie, can I give you a confidence? Yes. And to all our friends, to David Waddle, Vicky Marr, Cara York, thank you for being with us. Michonne, again, she's with us. I love it. Renee Kinsey, Monique Davis. God, so many of you. Vicky Cummings, thank you. All of you, you've met my boy, my little boy last night. In the middle of bolt lightning, it was very wild in Napa Valley last night. At about 2.30 in the morning, I hear the coyotes. I hear the chickens. I hear the actual mm -hmm. horses, everybody making noise in the garden because we have literally the biggest storm ever in Napa over the last few years. Frenchie was panicking. What did I do, Marnie? I took Frenchie. Did you take it to your bed? It was emotional. First time ever, I break every rule. Gina was a little jealous, I must say. <laughs> I brought him in between us in the bed and Frenchie could not even get up this oh. morning. I gave him a little bit of first growth coffee, didn't work out. And I gave him French humor, yeah, and it got him going. <laughs> French humor was with me all night. Well, I don't think it's a surprise that so many of our wines in the Frenchie line are blended because of course, you know, in, in the dog breeding world, this idea of combining different blood lines is very much a strength. And of course, almost all of our favorite blends are in this Frenchie line. And, and if you're not familiar, Frenchie is a line of wines that is produced at Raymond Vineyards. It is yeah. Napa Valley's yeah. very first dog winery located in St. Helena in the heart of Napa Valley. Well, we need to make Frenchie's a big deal on winemaking. <laughs> Marnie, I would like everybody yeah. to write to the utmost authorities of the world that the dogs are the best friends of mankind that they should be with us at the restaurant, at the bar, at the nightclub, in every hotel room, we should allow dogs. Because why should we forbid the best friends of men to ever get the experience with us? So I need to tell all of you, I built this winery personally a week after witnessing two dogs being so sad in their car, oh. waiting for their owner to eventually come back from the tasting room at Raymond and we started the Raymond Winery. They had us take it down because it was not to the specification of a chateau of Buena Vista, nor Raymond, nor the Lodge. So we rebuilt for each of the wineries, a great place for Frenchies and all the dogs. So oh, dear friends, fantastic. know today you can bring your dogs at every of our wineries. Frenchies. And no one has to sit in the car without the air conditioning. That's awesome. Oh, that of would course. be cruel. Right, and Frenchie is the world's greatest canine winemaker, in part because he learned from his partner, Stephanie Putnam, our director of winemaking at Raymond. And she is a huge dog lover herself. And of course, we adorn those gorgeous Frenchie wines with art that is produced by our friend, the artist Carol Liu, who portrays Frenchie, your French bulldog, in all sorts of Franco-American historical figures. So as you can see, as and, and, Frenchy Napoleon, Marie Antoinette, Frenchington, George Washington. And Marnie, I'm getting the question 
of where can we get such a great painting? Dear friends, it's very easy. You let us know. We'll introduce you to Carol Lou. She's the best in the United States to make your dog look like a historical character. We oh, happen to love fabulous. the 17, 18, 19th century. So this is our theme. But whatever you want to do, Carol will do. So forgive me, Marnie, but I think it's important to tell to all our friends, bring your dog part of your walls. He's part of the history, the legacy of your family. A dog is so important. Well, and we're so excited to have two new wines because for many years, people have been asking us for more Frenchie, more Frenchie, more Frenchie. And so we're thrilled to announce that we have two new blends. Very exciting. The one that you just poured and showed us the label, which is the one on the left here. The Frenchie Celebration is a white blend. And on the right, we're calling Frenchie Collage, which is a new red blend in the Frenchie line as well. The red is the sensuous category in our spectrum of style, whereas the white is vivacious, crisp, clean, and refreshing. Now, of course, the vivacious Frenchie Celebration that you're tasting right now with me is a multi-grape blend that has many different ingredients, but one of them takes front row is really the dominant grape variety and that is French Colombard. Now, this is quite interesting. Of course, it's a French grape because we're talking about Frenchie, the French Bulldog, and we have this gorgeous label that is so much easier to see here. You can see the Franco-American friendship across the water. The celebration label is absolutely gorgeous. But it's interesting because the dominant grape variety is called French Colombard, a grape that we know often better in the wines of the Cognac region and right. of course is distilled into their delicious spirits. But there are three minor blending and grape grapes that come from here as well. And one is a French origin, Trousseau Gris, which happens to be a, a mutant kind of not green, but more like pale purple grape from the Jura region of France. Then there's also 5% Albarino, which is the finest white grape of Spain. And then just a little hint, because dogs love to sniff around, we wanted to make sure that the Frenchy wines have a aromatic component that leaps out of the glass and the Greek grape called Muscat, the Italians call it Moscato, adds this amazing floral fragrance that gives any dog something to wag his tail about, which is why Frenchie got so excited about this blend. It is not enough to make this a sweet wine, but it is just enough to add that floral fragrance of honeysuckle and rose petals that we so love in that wine. And if you're going you do you have Marnie, the collage there as well, Jean-Claude? Marnie, before we go there, I love Lisa Aris just join us and Rosie Casper so kindly said, I love these labels. And thank you, Rosie, for saying that because that really makes my heart vibrate. All my life, and I need to say that to all of us, I was raised in a very shackled environment. You see my <laughs> lovely shackles on my lapel? Those well, little handcuffs you see, which is one of our jewelry. In a sense that Burgundy, where I was born and raised, is very traditional. So you cannot deviate in any way, shape, or form of the packaging, the presentation, and what you want to communicate. So it's all in the wine, which is great, but there's more sometimes to say. So when we developed those Frenchy labels, I had so much fun. Personally sketching, giving ideas to Carol Lou, and having her coming up with her interpretation of historical figures, and really bringing a very serious world of great wines, because Stephanie Putnam, Kathy George, Thane Knudsen, Sophie Drucker, they're very serious people in winemaking, but making great wines with a fun twist. And as Cassandra says it, or Raquelina, or Kathy Hawkins and Lynn, thank you for loving this wine because I'm so passionate about it. We just introduced this wine to go far away to Japan and people are loving it. We have it in France, you know, the biggest country for dogs, 82 million dogs in France, 62 million people. There's more dogs than people. Diseases. Can you imagine how many gorgeous legs are running around? And this, is, <laughs> and this is the cool part of it. So Marnie, thank you for saying that. And please tell us about the Red Blend because I'm, as much as I love the Albarino, 5%, nobody does it ever. We've done it with this amazing wine. 
Tell us about the red blend because this is so cool. Well, I have to tell you, this wine is so lush and so opulent that we put it in our sensuous category of red wines. And it has a lot of personality. The 81% the Cabernet Sauvignon that's used in this wine comes primarily from just north of the Napa County line in yep. the Red Hills Appalachian of Lake County. And this is a region that has deep iron rich soils and gives you luscious rich texture in the wines. It gives Cabernet that is perhaps not as hard as nails as sometimes it can be in those more age worthy wines in Napa Valley. It's a little bit more friendly, a little bit more easy going, certainly a summer weight Cabernet Sauvignon and an 81% Cabernet Sauvignon is certainly the dominant grape in our Frenchy collage. But I love how the label combines all of the historical figures over the years that Carol Liu has put together for us. It's an absolutely stunning package that includes both male and female Frenchy characters in a way that I really enjoy. Thank you. And, and Marnie, to the grape varieties, well, mm -hmm. Marnie, a quick uh, question from Heidi, which I love, mm -hmm. and she's totally right. It could be named, because it's a North Coast, a Cabernet Sauvignon if we want it. We decided to keep it the mystique be. of the red blend, Heidi. Yeah. But Heidi said, well, it's over 75%. It's a Cab at 81% Cabernet. Can we do that? And yes, Heidi. So well said. Forgive me. Yes, we would be able to do that. I, I think one of the reasons we chose to stay with the red blend though was to convey how much juicier and friendlier this wine is as compared to our current Cabernet Sauvignon, the Napoleon from Frenchy, which has a little bit more traditional structure to it. Here, the Merlot, the Petit Syrah, and the Zinfandel add a effusiveness, a juiciness that just, you know, I think it would make any dog drool. It's it's so delicious and mouth watering that to me, I think those add, it kind of takes it, it's a departure from the traditional Cabernet Sauvignon style. And, and I think that's one of the reasons that we chose to label it as a red blend instead. But I just wanted to go ahead and stop sharing though, because I think that this really has been such fun talking about these wines, but you need to see the bottles for them to really pop. Yeah, everybody needs to get it and I love uh, Robert Landy says it's a bottle to keep, I agree. So Robert, I have it in my bar at home. It throws, I made it as a magnum and three liter to inspire everybody. And as Ilona said, this bottle inspired me to create a fabulous table. And I agree. And I want to raise a glass to my good friend, Cecil Kingsley, who Heidi and Cecil collects a lot of our wines and I got to tell you, both of you, you have the book, that's a wine to have. And I love it because it's not extremely expensive as well. And I really believe a lot of the wines we present all through the JCB Live are all over the place, from $25, $30 all the way up to four, or $500. We actually have some wine we're going to present at $1,000. Why not? Once in a while. But it's not about the dollars, it's about you enjoy. And when I created this wine, dear friends, I need to confess, as Peggy knows, uh, she's getting her wine tomorrow. It was very challenging at first, and I need your full support. I personally, because I had a French bulldog, and I came to Napa Valley, and I started a Frenchy winery. And people said, you crazy. You're not serious. You're not whatever. And I wouldn't say what I heard. You know, I have a very thick skin. So to go through, it's very difficult. But many people were critical, except my friends from Burgundy who said, I know he's going to do something great and the wine will follow the quality of the label. And that is so important, I think, in life is we made something fun, exciting. And what I love at home, I bring the wines and people first, they love. And they say, what the hell is this? And often they see Frenchie. <laughs> so they say, oh, I understand the relationship, Marnie. And then they taste the wine and they said, wow, are you serious? And they think it's going to be a $5.99 or, you know, whatever it is, uh, entry level wine, which could be it. But it has been so much fun to surprise, honor. And I want to say to everybody throughout the years, we've raised so much money for dogs, 
so much for money for animal shelters, so much for money to adopt a dog or an animal. That is so exciting to do because at the end of the day, I think we need to do things for people, for sure, but as well for our lovely animals because don't we love them? Absolutely. And there's something about the lushness of this wine, Jean-Charles, that made me I crave love a your jacket. Good morning. So I thought I would pull out my leopard coat. And it, it's just plush and fun and not too serious, which at the end of the day, there are plenty of serious wines out there in the world. It's good to have one that just makes you want to smile. I agree. And Cecil, my good friend, my new fantastic grape collector who has probably the nicest seller there is in the West of the United States. He's not quite in California. We have to go close to Arkansas, in Arkansas, in fact, who is saying 80%, 80 plus percent cab. Can I sell her it? What would you answer, Marnie? I would say that you absolutely could sell her this wine for, I would say two to five years with no issue. And could you keep it longer? Absolutely, but that depends in part on your preferences, whether you prefer a little bit more of those tea and spice-like flavors that develop with time or more of the lusciousness of fruit of youth. But this is a wine that does not require cellaring. So uh, to me, I, I think dogs tend to live more in the moment in that hedonism of the now. And to me, I think that this wine fits that bill too. Exactly. So. I would recommend Cecil, you get those wines, you drink them. So I'm gonna surprise you, Cecil. I'm serving those two wines tomorrow. I'm playing tennis late afternoon, and I'm gonna have those with a barbecue with spicy sausage and beautiful little lamb chops. And we're gonna serve it slightly colder. And I'm, we're gonna have a blast. And those are the two wines we're gonna be serving as a theme because everybody is bringing their tennis racket and their dogs and their children. That's the I want to come. Can I come? Can I come? You're welcome anytime. <laughs> I'm going to have to smell you for every part. You know how they are. <laughs> Specifically French bulldogs. <laughs> but dear friends, which is very cool, as a conclusion, you have on this label, and Dylan, you may want to get closer. We have Napoleon I, you have Benjamin Franklin, you have the coronation of Louis XV, you have Louis XIV on a horse, you have Marie Antoinette in the middle, you have obviously Betsy Ross, you have, you know, Marie Antoinette enjoying the almost, it's not Marie Antoinette, but it's a take on it, the Eiffel Tower because the Eiffel Tower was built late 19th century. You had Frenchie getting obviously his title of nobility right here. The fun in life, dear friends, and I wanna leave you with this, with Marnie, because we have so much friends. She's a leopard, I'm the tiger, and we have Frenchie in the middle of us, is to be able to have fun with great wines, to be able to enjoy life. I wanna tell you, you know, it's been five months we've been this way and we live together. I see so many of you making so many great comments and it's so nice to be able to have great friends. Life is about friendship. It's not about what we have. It's about what we have together and what we could share. It's about what we can enjoy together and what we can make for one another. We happen, Marnie and I, and all our great team to make wine. That's what we wanna share with you. And the fun we have to be with you every night because between JCB Live Happy Hour and the wine style, it's almost every day and occasionally to post. So we wanna thank you so much for being part of the family, for loving animals, obviously dogs, but cats and others, and for being the great friends you have. So. Renee, thank you for singing a great heart. We love you. Peggy, thank you as well. Your dress as animal print at the ambassador party was insane. I could still dream of it. Marnie, you're such an amazing educator and lighter, and obviously so much into inspiring all of us. Thank you. 
So when are we doing our next book, Marnie? I think About we are already five. working on our next book. We got to get started. There's so many more topics. So dear friends, yes. Cassandra, come for tennis and food. Bring your charming husband and your son. Everybody's going to be invited very soon to Napa Valley because we're going to reopen soon, we hope. But dear friends, thank you for being with us today. Marnie, it was so exciting. And I got to tell you, for the first time ever in my life, I got to spend the night with Frenchie in my own bed. And it was quite <laughs> exciting. So I, I hate him a little rich for me. Either the pandemic is way here. too long or I'm changing. Let's not have it too long that way. To Frenchie and to friendship. Cheers. Cheers.